Most controversial movies of all time. Oh god. Well Is this human centipede? There's a first one? Welcome back to Sidemen Reacts. Today you have myself, Toby, alongside Josh and Simon, reacting to the most controversial movies of all time. Guys, what are you expecting to be in here, please? Avatar. Titanic. Why do you hate Avatar so much? It's bro? a fraud. It did it's well. Avatar because... 2 coming out, isn't it? Literally, bro, my take on this movie. It's so fucking terrible. I don't understand. It's literally nothing. It's like three hours of niggas just standing at, staring at light. Like, I, I just, I don't even understand the movie. I, 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 God, thank you, Simon. Thank you, thank you, Simon, bro. Yeah. It did well because it was the first 3D film that took off, right? And it's yeah. literally just stolen the storyline from Pocahontas. And everyone was it's like, wow. a good film. Everyone was like, wow, look at those people, they're blue. Ugh. Stink. <laughs> they copied after 65. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I don't think that's going to be in there, but let's find out what is. What do you think is going to be in there? Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Here are a few films that will forever be associated with how much public pushback they received upon release. Oh, Human Centipede. I've never watched that, and I don't plan on it. You don't want to watch it. Last House on the Left. Nowadays, Wes Craven's name tends to conjure up images of Freddy Krueger or Ghostface from Scream. But years before Craven reshaped the horror genre, he started his directing career with a dark, dirty, uncomfortable movie called Last House on the Left. The 1972 movie follows a gang of psychos who brutally destroy two teenage girls, then seek refuge in a house that happens to belong to the parents of one of their victims. <gasps> Wait, oh, they made a remake of this. Yeah, I, say, I, feel like I've I feel like I've seen this. But definitely not with those characters. Didn't they make a remake of this called like uh, La Last House on the Left? Last House on the Right. <laughs> no, they made a they made a sequel to Penultimate House on the Left. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that controversial if they made a second one, like a remake. Maybe they took out the controversy. When combined with an uneven tone that includes a bizarre sheriff, the movie got some seriously negative press. The British Board of Film Classification rejected the film and labeled Last House on the Left a video nasty, meaning that all copies of any VHS <laughs> tapes within England a were to be seized nasty, by the police. Yeah. Yeah. The movie was only reclassified in 2008. Even one of the film's villains, actor Fred Lincoln, stated that he wished the film was banned internationally rather than just in the UK. This low-budget no, movie it. produced for under $90,000 quickly gained such an unsavory reputation that some conspiracy theorists debated whether it had been funded by the mob or adult filmmakers. What the fuck? I, that is what? That Damn. film was seized by the police. I mean, they've reclassified it now, but it's crazy that it even ever got to that stage. Yeah, right? it's wild. It's what? Like, remember Manhunt? The PlayStation game that got banned, right? No. You don't remember Manhunt? I don't. No. Do you not? No. There's a game called Manhunt uh, that had the same thing, I think. I don't, I don't think it was that like, like, marked for a police seizure, but it was more a case of like... That is wild. They just stopped making it anymore. Is Manhunt 2 banned in the UK? I take it back. It must have been pretty controversial. The Last Temptation of Christ. Biblical adaptations are never more than a few inches away from the cliffs of controversy, but this movie stirred up a reaction like no other. At first, 1988's The Last Temptation of Christ doesn't sound like a movie that would cause such a ruckus. It pulled in an Academy Award nomination for Catholic director Martin Scorsese with a script by Calvinist Paul Schrader. However, the movie's depiction of Jesus Christ- Is that the guy that plays Green Goblin? I think he plays Jesus Christ. <laughs> No, I think he plays Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> not this dude. Not guy, not guy's name is. Oh, I think it is. It looks like him anyway, if it's not. Yeah, it looks very like him. The movie's depiction of Jesus Christ is played by Willem Dafoe. There you go. Well, that's literally me and Adam every time a fucking movie is on, bro. Every time. This nigga knows every, every real, like all of the people that you would ever see in a movie, bro. This nigga knows all of their real names, okay? All of their real names. Every time we watch a movie, he's like, oh, is that so-and-so? I'm like, I have no idea. Okay, that's his name. <laughs> no, like, what? <laughs> I was Googling it. Is quite unconventional. Defoe's Jesus is weary, run down, and tormented by self-doubt over his impending sacrifice. And on the cross, the movie's Jesus experiences a sort of dream sequence wherein he's tempted to climb down, get married to Mary Magdalene, have kids, and live an ordinary life. Jesus overcomes his last temptation by accepting his role as God's son. But the film was condemned before it was even finished, with its production igniting campaigns, protests, and petitions. Evangelist Bill Bright publicly offered to pay off the studio in exchange for handing over all prints of the film. The film was so loathed that a Paris theater showing The Last Temptation of Christ was even set on fire, what? landing 13 nice. people in the hospital. Not what as bad fuck? as what happened to the film's Jesus, but still, you know, pretty bad. Right, so you're sat there saying like, oh, you know what? I disagree with this film. This is this shouldn't be done. So I'm, I'm going to go burn, burn people alive. Burn 13 Try people. and burn 13 people, yeah. Makes sense. 
Oh, here we go. Human centipede. Let's this guy was tapped. Here. This is a weird right. fit. The second oh, actor is, this oh, actor is so Yeah, the second like, one I feel like was even worse, dude. Thing from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't oh, know my God. This God. second one is so much weirder. It's the guy's the weirdest guy. We all remember back when the first human centipede came out, even if we wish we didn't. The story centered on a mad scientist's rather innovative idea of how to spread one supersized digestive system between three people. Understandably, the movie kicked up a flurry of controversy. However, upon its release, the actual human centipede movie turned out to be a surprisingly conventional B-horror movie, albeit one more gruesome no, than the norm. Horrible. But that wasn't the case with the even more graphic sequel, The Human Centipede 2. He's just got sunglasses now. This movie features a fanboy of the original film being so inspired that he creates a homemade copycat centipede of his own using staple guns, duct tape, and barbed wire. Oh. The BBFC argued that the grotesqueness of these sequences made it unfit for public consumption and effectively banned the movie in 2011. It met a similar fate with the censorship boards of Australia. Isn't of course, the movie was followed with Human Centipede 3, a film that upped the violence even more. <laughs> a total trilogy of Human Centipedes. Hey, everybody's it's not, it's not working thought would end up in a trilogy yeah right? like all the <laughs> films get a trilogy even centipede got one song of the south almost everyone has heard disney's famous That's zippity doodah be. melody because it's I <laughs> How do movies like come back? Like, does is there like somebody that's like really mad? Like, because I mean, I guess there's a lot of people who spend money on it, right? So do they just like sit and wait, or do they, like is it an every year thing that they just keep sending it in, waiting for it to get released again? Like, I don't really understand how that works practically a symbol of the House of Mouse. But even if you know the Academy Award-winning song, you've probably never seen the movie it originally came from. That's because the film in question, titled Song of the South, has been locked away in Disney's Forbidden Vault for almost three decades. It's widely as regarded as a racially insensitive ah. movie that perpetuates Southern slave stereotypes, with black characters like Uncle Remus being portrayed as jolly, happy-go-lucky folk who cheerfully serve their white oppressors. There it is. I was wondering when the controversy was. <laughs> that shit is hella racist. I think, racist. Like, you. I think well, I the South Park cartoons, skit is nasty, like, bro. That okay, shit was horrible. This is, is going to be one of the darkest ones, go I reckon. Like, this is going to be a yeah. bad one. I feel like a lot of like old kids' cartoons have like racist connotations in them. Probably. It's Walt Disney. You're not wrong. Due to its infamy, Disney has tried to burrow the film out of the world's collective memory. Oops, sorry, Disney. The primary <laughs> residual traces that remain are that famous tune, and the strange fact that many of the characters have survived as part of the Cuddlefish. Splash Mountain ride. God damn it. That's where that song's from. It's very that song. The Devils. Though The Devils engendered a massive controversial backlash when it first came out in 1971, the studio-driven hacking and slashing that the film went through caused it to mostly disappear off the radar until a recent cult revival. The Devils is loosely based on the true story of Urban Grandier, an unconventional Catholic priest who was burned at the stake under I've accusations of, of witchcraft in the 1600s. Russell's fusion of religious iconography... Ugh, Sparkle, I really hope that was some type of a... I mean, I really hope you were being, uh, what do you call it, sarcastic with that. Ugh. With graphic imagery set off a volcano of anger with thundering protests. Why is her neck like that? It's really dry. Because I'm trying to work out. It's really pissing me off. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. She's an osteo. <laughs> Seriously, I've got a good one if you want one, you know. Desperate to calm the reaction, the studio ordered countless cuts to the already expensive movie, slicing out so many key sequences that few people today have ever seen the original cut. I heard they were promised uh, it was going to be 90 minutes. It ended up only being 70. <laughs> I hate on that yeah, never complained. Yeah. Wait, what? They paid eighteen dollars for that. Yeah, eighteen dollars for ninety minutes, and he gets like 65, 70 minutes tops. <laughs> yeah. Tommy's like, like wait, what? Bleepers, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Life of Brian. Brian. Monty Python oh, might have been heralded for the Holy Grail, but their 1979 comedy Life of Brian was a different story altogether. The film is a satirical take on the life of Christ, introducing the world to Brian of Nazareth, a regular guy who happens to be born on Christmas. That fringe. That fringe was nuts. Brian then <laughs> ends up with the bad luck of being named as the Messiah and is eventually crucified by the Romans. The little rascal has spirit? Has what, sir? Spirit? Yes, he did, sir. Playing the Jesus story for laughs stirred up a tornado of controversy. What? Theaters showing Life of Brian were picketed, the film was banned in Norway, and the whole enterprise was condemned by religious groups. The BBC even aired a television debate pitting two Monty Python members, John Cleese and Michael Palin, against the Bishop of Southwark and religious spokesman Malcolm Muggeridge. Despite all the controversy, Life of Brian ended up being an enormous box office success. Now, f off! 
Oh. Yeah, I'm a just throw it out there. Good film. You're gonna say that, that that one. I didn't know that was like, even that controversial. Yeah. People have seen that. that? Anything that touches on like religion is always gonna be truth. You right? No, not truth, you're as right. in you're right. <laughs> Bro, Simon. No, yeah, I've, I've never, never seen no that. No Titanic either. Uh, I mean, wait, why wait, would why Titanic, would Titanic be? be controversial? I don't know. I just said Titanic, didn't I? That was the answer I said at the start of the video. Hey, you need to show up. <laughs> it's quite controversial that she didn't. Allow, Rose didn't allow Jack to get on the fucking door. Ah, uh, that wouldn't have helped two people's weight. It would have. I think, yeah, I think it would have. They didn't find. There was so much room on there and she didn't let him get on. It was a very, a very buoyant door. And he froze. What a bitch. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> well, they always come crazy. I love these. I always find out just the most random, random assortment of facts, man. It's fucking epic. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to the Simon. You're really missing out on life, all right? I love you guys so much. Big peace.